So now that we've got our home screen all set up within our game, we're now ready to press our start game button to take us to our game view where we can then begin to play the game. But before we can play the game, we need to design the interface for it. Now to design the screen or interface for our game, again, it's very similar to how we've done it for our home view. We're going to jump in to our main Dutch storyboard. And again, by default, we've got our view in here, which we've all set up for our home view when we first build on an application. We now need to add in a second view for our game screen. And we do this within our objects at the bottom here. And we'll scroll to the very top. And we're going to select a view controller. We're going to drag and drop this in, not with inside of our screen here. We're going to drag and drop it next to it. There we go. And that's going to be the second view within our application. Now, by adding that in, you can already see straight away we've got a warning. Now, that warning is basically telling us we've got this new view, but there is no way our application can go to it or use it or display it within the app. So we need to make sure that we are basically able to get to that view to display it to the user. Now, how we want to get to it is we want to press the start game button and it take us straight to this view. Now, this is very simple. It doesn't require any code whatsoever. Simply select our start game button, right click or control click and drag it over to our new view and select as the action segue to present moduli. So by doing that, you can now see we have this link arrow going to this new view. More importantly, our warning has now disappeared. So if I select this link, this arrow, and it shows us that that is connected by our start game button. We press this, it displays our new view. And to show this is going to happen, we're going to go to build and run now. We're going to press our start game button, and it should take us to a completely blank view within our application. So we just wait for it to now build and run and load up. So here we go. Press the start game button. And there we go, it now transitions to that new view. Now briefly, you see in the transition, it kind of came from the bottom of the screen. We can change how it transitions over. So again, select the link here, and in the Attributes Inspector, we have then our transition. Uh, by default, we set it to Animate. Default transition is that one that just simply slides up. We have a possibility to choose four of them. So by default, cover vertically is what you just seen. There's flip horizontal, which kind of flips it sideways. There's cross dissolve, which is my personal favorite, which fades in that new view. And there's partial curl, which flips it up to a certain height. And it kind of, um, I don't really like it. Let's put it this way. Uh, it kind of flips it up like a notepad and you can still see the first screen or the second view on the screen itself. It's not a personal favorite of mine, but what is a personal favorite is cross dissolve. So if we build and run now, and you can see the transition to get to this second view is a nice faded animation. So as the simulator now loads up, we just wait for it to appear. I press start game, and there you go. Nice fade in to this completely blank view. So let's adjust then and change the uh, design of it. Let's create a nice interface for it. So we want to try and keep the theme running throughout our whole application. And by that, what I mean is we're going to drag and drop in our image. Now, again, it's the same process we've done before. So if you found it quite easy um, designing our home screen, again, it's going to be just as easy to do our game screen. Or if you found it quite tricky, this gives you the pers um, perfect now reason to kind of um, home in your skills and improve on them and kind of have a more understanding of how you design simple interfaces. So we've got the background in now. We're going to give it a name of background and we make sure the content mode is from scale to fit to aspect fill and then we're going to select clip to bounce. Pretty good. Then we need to add in all the labels and the buttons that we're going to be needing to enable us to play the game. So there's going to be two or more importantly three main objects we're going to be using. Uh, we're going to need to make sure that we have the ability to display how much time is remaining within our game. We need to display the current score our user has gotten within the game and a button so our user can interact to increase their score. So we're going to start then with our objects here. Let's go back all the way to the top. By adding in our label, 
drag that and drop that at the top there. So this is going to be, we're going to first start with our time remaining. We'll centralize it and we'll give them the same attributes to how we've done our high score here. So we're going to change the uh, text here to simply say time remaining. There we go. Change it to the blue that we've been using. Change it from a custom font there. And my favorite, Avenue, from buck to black. And then increase the size there. Let's see how big we need to go. I think 30 will be perfect for us. There we go. And then we're going to go all the way down to the bottom now to give it a background with the color white. Perfect. So we've got that in. Going to simply copy and paste that in underneath. And then this one is going to display how much time is remaining. Uh, by default, we're going to give our users the time of 10 seconds in the game to play. But let's change the color of this as well. So we kind of go with the, uh, the kind of um, separator theme here. So the color of our text will be white. And scroll down to our background. We have it on default to be completely clear. And we'll have the text size be, let's go up to 45 on that. Make it a little bit wider. There we go. And what I'll do is copy and paste those. So I've got two sets of them all together. Uh, we could do with actually making these a little bit wider as well. So in the size inspector, let's have their height to be 100 each. And select those and put them underneath. There we go, perfect. And then this one is going to be our score. And by default, our user is going to have zero as their score. And then all that's left to do then is add in the button, which our users press as fast as they possibly can to then be given the score. So let's have this by default. Let's say tap me. There we go. And attributes inspector will make it just the same as what we've done with our start game button. We'll give the text color to be white. Change it to a custom font. Avenue, we'll go for black. And let's increase this size. 50 should be good enough. And then we give it our background color. Now we already have the other one there by default, but this is going to show you how to do it. We select white. Click on the actual square white block. Now bring the opacity down to 25. There we go. That looks pretty good. I'm quite happy with that, how it's now turning out. So once we've got that all in there, we've got it all set up. We still need to do a few other things to what we've done on our home screen. We need to link them all up with our um, kind of um, constraints to make sure that they work universally on all different iPhone screen sizes. We need to create all the actions and outlets that we're going to be needing. And we need to add then all the corner radiuses to all the objects that we currently have in. So let's first start then with the constraints to make sure that it looks perfect on different screen sizes. So we do this by first selecting our background image and I'll pin this to all the edges around. Again, just like how we did on our home screen, adding those four constraints. Then we select all of our objects. There we go. And we're also going to pin these to all the edges around them too and add in those 16 constraints. You see, it makes them go all a little bit funny, but we can adjust these now. So what I'm going to do then is select both the time remaining and score, pin these to a certain height, and we'll select this to, I believe, we set them both to 75, adding those constraints there. And we'll do now the same to both of these secondary labels, which is displaying, again, uh, the values of our time remaining and score. Now we'll set these a little bit higher. We'll go to 85 for these fixating their heights. And then for our tap me button, we don't really need to do anything to it. And that's purely down to these four labels here. They're going to have a fixated um, height, it means they say the same height no matter what screen size we're on. It's our tap me button, which is going to be the buffer object to get smaller or bigger depending on what screen size we're running on. So again, simple as that to create universal constraints for our iPhone. So if we go to display it on a, let's scroll up a bit here, a uh, bigger iPhone screen, you can see, looks all perfect. Go down to the one we just currently designed on. We get smaller and we get really small and it all works perfect. Doesn't look 
too bad at all. The only thing that we could do to adjust it now is add in the corner radiuses to make sure that, again, these objects have a really nice design. Because there's one thing looking at these square edges, but then when we add the corner radiuses on, it makes the application 10 times better. So the first thing we do then is select all three objects we're going to be adding in corner radiuses and make sure that we add the clip to bounds. There we go. Then we're going to create all the actions and outlets that we need for all of these objects before we then go add you know, the corner radiuses on them. So before we add in all our um, actions and outlets, we need to add in a brand new um, kind of a view controller class to control it. So as where we have by default the view controller dot uh, which controls our home view, we need to add in a second one to control our game view. So to do this on our project name at the top here, we right click it and we go to add in a new file. The new file we're going to be adding is a Cocoa Touch class. Press next. Make sure the language is Swift and I'll call it Game View Controller and then press next and create that in our project now. Now drag and drop it underneath our view controller dot, um, Swift here. Back within our main Dutch storyboard, if I select the files owner of our home view, go to the identity inspector here. You can see within the class view controller, which is the name of our Swift class up here, is linked to it. If I select the files owner of this one within the identity inspector, nothing is currently linked up to it. So we need to tell it that we want the game view controller that we just created. When you enter it in, press enter. It's now hooked up that class to this view. So it means that only that class can control this view. And if we want anything to happen, we code it within the game view controller. So now we hook that up, we're going to bring up our assistant editor. And if it hasn't automatically updated, simply at the top here, go for our project to select the game view controller dot Swift for it to update within again, our assistant editor, then I'm going to space out between our view controller or the game view controller class there and the view did load so we can now add in all of our actions and outlets. So we're first going to start with all our outlets. We're going to start from the top and work our way down. So we need to add in an outlet for our time remaining. I'll call it label. There we go. Connect that in. We're then going to add in a second label for our score here. Call this label two. Now I'm not going to add in outlets for these two labels here because we're not adjusting the background image for those just yet or doing anything to them at the moment. We can add in outlets in the next coming lectures when we come to use those. But I need one more outlet now for this button, which I simply call it button because it's the only button that we're going to have within this view. And once we got that in, just like how we did within our view controller.swift class within the view did load section. What we simply do is we get our label one dot layer dot corner radius to simply equal five dot zero and again our label two dot layer dot corner radius to also equal five dot zero and then finally our button dot layer dot corner radius to also equal five dot zero. Now, providing that we also selected them all to have um, clip to bounds, this will now add in the corner radius to all of these objects. So let's go to build and run then, and let's test it out. Now, we haven't built and run and tested it since we added the ability to switch to this second view. So it can be quite cool now to see that when we do switch to our second view, it's going to have all these objects in. It's going to be looking just like the home view, all nicely designed. So I'll place it to the side here. We press start game has that nice fade effect in and you can now see all the objects they got the corner radiuses in they look pretty pretty good I'm quite impressed with this so there's maybe one more design feature that I'll add in now and this is something that we're also going to change on our home view as well is we got the kind of a labels here being white they don't stand out as much as everything else does so we can probably add a little drop shadow in there to make those pieces of text there pop out to our user. So back within Xcode, we're going to close the assistant editor, go back to our standard editor, and I can select both multiple files here, go to our attributes inspector, and we're going to add in a little shadow. And we'll add in uh, a black one here. 
I'm going to select here, we've got the shadow offset. So think of the offset here as we've got the width and the height. The width is left to right, the height is up and down. Now you see by default it's a minus one, so there's a slight little shadow above the top of it. So we're going to set them both to zero, zero, which is dead center. Now if I go minus, you can see the shadow goes to the left. If I go plus the width, it goes to the right. Same thing with the height. If I go plus, it goes down below. If I go minus, it goes up above. So we need to find a nice balance. So plus one, plus one gives a little shadow to the right there. Let's go plus two, plus two on each one. That looks pretty cool. And what I'll do, I'll add a nice little um, opacity on it. So let's go down to how's 25% going to look on that. I think that looks pretty nice. So a nice 25% shadow on both of those labels there, and we'll do it to the home label as well. We'll use that custom color we just used there, going plus two on each one. So now when we build and run, all it's going to simply do is make the text within the labels stand out a little bit more, just pop out to our user, rather than just looking plain, basic, and flat on the actual screen. So as you can see now, it's got a nice little drop shadow, start game, and they both have it too. Looks pretty cool. I'm quite impressed with that. So there we go. The last two lectures, including this one, we've designed our start screen and our game screen within our application. In the next coming lectures now, we're going to set up the ability to start playing our game. We're going to add stuff in like our game timers, pressing the, um, the button to start adding the score, uh, the end game feature, and even basically controlling the game in general uh, before we go on to add in the ability to um, push to our end game screen, share our content such as the game score, and then even going to play the whole game again.